Welcome to this tutorial about creating dimmer curves for the sundial dimmer. I'm using the free DMX Workshop software along with a Netlinx quad gateway to connect to the DMX RDM port of the sundial and I'm also using the artistic license USB light sensor. Um, so to edit the curves go to the DMX Workshop utilities menu and select Dimmer Curve Edit. You'll see that there are two tabs, uh, the first one called Dimmer Curves. Uh, on the left hand side of the screen you can see a chart that gives you a numerical view of the Dimmer Curve. The first column input runs between 0 and 255 for the DMX512 levels and the output column runs between 0 and 10,000 uh, which is approximately 13-bit internal dimmer curve resolution. The dimmer curves are saved as CSV files which means you can freely exchange them with Excel and edit them in Excel if you would prefer. Um, you can also just type in uh, values here if you type here you'll see that the graph in the center will immediately respond. And the second way of editing the curve uh, if you just want a rough and ready curve to uh, experiment with is to actually draw in the graph area uh, over here and you can put in a response curve and experiment with that. You can then edit it numerically if you want uh, as well. Um, the most efficient way of generating curves is to use photometric data and we do that with the light sensor tab here. Uh, the first thing you need to do is connect to the center and you'll see the lux values coming from the light here. Now we're actually going to use the sundial dimmer to drive the lamp that we're testing. So if we navigate down and find the sundial dimmer, we can see that currently um, we have channel 1 set to linear, channel 2 set to a test lamp curve, and channel 3 set to linear, channel 4 set to linear. Well, we're going to use channel 2 to do our testing. Now, it's really important that the channel you use to capture the photometric data is set to linear. So right-click there and set the subdevice personality and change it to linear. You'll see that refresh there. Channel 2 is now set to linear. That's great. So back across to the light sensor screen. Um, port address, that's the uh, Artnet universe. Uh, you can see up here that we have universe 1. Um, so setting that to universe 1 is correct to talk to the sundial dimmer. Start address, let's set that to channel 2, and that will mean we're communicating with uh, channel 2 on the dimmer. This fader here gives you manual control over the lamp and you can see that as I take that up to the top uh, the lamp has now come up to full and we're showing 2,200 or so uh, on the lux meter. So that's a useful way of just checking that we've got control of the lamp and also indeed ensuring that the, uh, the photo sensor uh, isn't saturating at the top of the DMX level. Uh, the maximum reading it can achieve is uh, 10,000 lux. So you need to position the, the light meter so that it's as close to the lamp as possible but without it saturating at the top. So now we've tested that, um, we run the test. You will see the green, uh, green curve start to move across the screen and this is mapping the uh, lux levels of the lamp we're testing for every single DMX512 level. You can see with this particular lamp that I'm testing, which is a cheap and cheerful little uh, LED replacement G9 bulb, um, that there's a big plateau at the beginning where nothing is happening. We're just starting to see some illumination now, and you can see the curve start to head north really quite quickly. The y-axis on the screen um, will recalibrate as the lux levels uh, go up. So let's wait and see what the response of this lamp looks like.
that we've got a relatively uh, linear response curve in the center of the screen, um, but it's now starting to um, saturate. We've finished doing the mapping, and the program has now switched the uh, the lamp off. So we can see that we've got a, a looking at the green curve. We've got a relatively linear response in the centre of the screen, but we've got this big dead space at the beginning, and also we've got this dead space where it saturates here. Now, um, over here, you can see that it's showing you the DMX levels and the center value. So we can see that plateau starts here at around about DMX 200, and the plateau here ends at around about DMX 50. Um, that means that we're only actually using 150 uh, levels of the 256 available, which explains why we're not achieving very good dimming with this uh, particular bulb. So. Let's generate a, a response curve, a dimmer curve, automatically. The first thing we do is to uh, left-click and drag these yellow cursors in. And we want to position those just at the edges of the saturation so that inside the yellow bars, the dark green is the part of the curve that we're interested in. That's what we want to map. Having done that, press the interpolate button, the blue curve will change to show us a dimmer response curve that will null out the response of the bulb and give us a linear response. Um, you can see some peaks in the curve here, and you can work with that by changing the number of points that we interpolate through. For instance, if I take this down to just eight points and run interpolate again, you'll see a much smoother curve. Um, and you can actually here see the lines that are being run between the points. You can experiment with the number of points to use. Generally, I find that around about 16 uh, is quite a good compromise. Having done that, we can go back to the dimmer curve, and we can see these numbers in the chart here. We're starting with 0, and at the end, we only get up to 8,000. As a matter of course, I tend to just manually type in 10,000 at the end, just so that the curve actually goes up to full at DMX4. Um, when you're happy with that, hit Save As and um, give it the name of a lamp. We're going to call this Test 2. Press Save. Now, if this has worked well, when we are, if we upload this curve to the lamp, we should now get a relatively linear uh, response. So let's give that a try. Select Curve Upload, and we want to open the curve that we have just generated. So scroll down and select Test 2. Now we want to upload this to Curve 2. So select Curve 2 and hit Upload. You'll see the progress bar run, and that curve has now been uploaded. Um, if we pull down the personality list here, you can see that Test 2 has been loaded into Position 2. So let's go over to Output 2 of the dimmer and set its personality to Test 2. So Channel 2 of the dimmer is now assigned to run the curve that we've just generated. So if we get rid of these yellow markers and we rerun the test with the photo sensor, we should now be getting um, a relatively linear curve. So let's give that a go. Well, that's a good start because we can see that we're immediately getting um, 
illumination out of the lamp at low DMX values. So uh, that's a tick already. The response curve is never going to be uh, a perfectly straight line um, with this type of LED replacement lamp. All we're trying to achieve is um, a credibly linear curve that stretches its ability to fade across the entire range of DMX values. Okay, that's the graph completed. I think you can see that we've uh, achieved a pretty credible linear response out, out of a LED replacement bulb that natively had a very average response. Thank you very much for watching.